It was said that Maxwell Bodenheim was more disliked, derided, denounced, beaten up, and kicked down more flights of stairs than any poet of whom I have heard or read. And that was said by a friend. Born in small town Mississippi, Bodenheim swept into Greenwich Village in the Prohibition 1920s, when the neighborhood was infamous around the world as, in the words of the bank robber Willie Sutton, or at least his ghostwriter, a den of iniquity, a sink of perversion, in other words, the place to go. Bodenheim was bright but viciously boorish, physically handsome yet repulsively slovenly, and argumentative to a fault with a genius for the insult that could end any argument, usually with his being punched in the mouth. He desired more than anything to be taken seriously as a poet, yet as a writer he was best known for a string of sensational sleazy novels that made him a lot of money and got him tried for obscenity. He squandered the money on drink and gambling, as though he couldn't throw it away fast enough. His reputation as a daring, risque author attracted a cloud of what would later be called groupies. Many of them were teenagers from the hinterlands who flocked to Greenwich Village in the 1920s to cut loose in the neighborhood's non-stop pagan revels. For some, it turned out to be a fatal attraction. One was Gladys Loeb, 18, from the Bronx. In 1928, Bodenheim ended a brief fling with her adding that her poetry was doggerel. Her landlady soon found her with her head in the gas oven, barely clinging to life, and to Bodenheim's portrait. Amy Cortez, another young conquest, was found with her head in her own oven, also clutching Bodenheim's portrait. Succeeding where Gladys failed, she was dead at 19. 22-year-old Virginia Drew threw herself into the Hudson, after Bodenheim jilted her. She died as well. Newspapers around the country were now printing lurid stories about the deadly Greenwich Village Lothario. By the end of the 1920s, Bodenheim's dissipations and provocations had caught up with him. From the 1930s until his death in the 1950s, he was a fixture on the streets and in the bars of the village by turns annoying and sad-making decaying before his old friend's eyes into a stinking, toothless ghost, tottering drunkenly to sleep on flophouse floors, shabby and gaunt as any Bowery bum, his friend Ben Hecht wrote. He cranked out some more of his cheap novels and drank the proceeds. He was periodically arrested for causing a scene in a bar or on the street or for sleeping in the subway. Despite his increasingly ghastly appearance, he still got himself knocked out for coming on to other men's women. Eventually, he was reduced to hawking his poems to tourists in Washington Square for a quarter each. Wiseacres in the bars fed him gin and laughed at his drunken mumbling, mumblings and rants, which sometimes yielded a famous line like, Greenwich Village is the Coney Island of the soul. As much as they were repulsed and saddened by him, Greenwich Village's bohemians of the 1950s also admired him. In his headlong descent into the abyss, his lust for the extremes of degradation, he was like a dark archangel of negative capability for them. He represented the ultimate rejection of bourgeois virtue and mainstream values, even to the point of total self-destruction. In 1951, a woman named Ruth Gordon bought a poem from him with her last quarter. She was 32, he was a 59-year-old derelict, and with a couple of weeks, they were going around as Mr. and Mrs. Bodenheim, though it's not clear they ever bothered to make it official. Villagers said only a crazy woman would have taken up with him, and they may have been right. They decayed together for the next couple of years chronically broke and drunk, descending from cheap rooming houses to flop houses to sleeping in hallways and doorways. She turned tricks when she could, and he beat her when he found out. In 1953, 
Ruth took up with a violent, mentally unstable dishwasher named Harold Weinberg. One night in the winter of 1954, the three of them wound up in Weinberg's flophouse room off the Bowery. Bodenheim roused himself from a drunken stupor to see Ruth and Weinberg having sex. He attacked Weinberg, who pulled out a twenty-two and shot Bodenheim through the heart. Then he stabbed Ruth in the chest. Today, Bodenheim is remembered more for this tabloid end than for any other achievement. Even his memoir was a dispiriting sham. My Life and Loves in Greenwich Village, published posthumously in 1954, was ghostwritten by a hack who, like everyone else in the village, had bought him drinks to listen to his drunken ramblings.